Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Always happy to have you join me and today's video is one of a new series. Um, I've decided that it's probably really useful to show all of you the type of makeup I wear on an everyday Monday to Friday normal basis. What that means is that when I come on to film a YouTube video, I get really dolled up and glammed up. You know, I put my falsies on, I put my five layers of shadow, um, you know, my highlighter, my blush, like everything is very strong. Um, maybe not as strong compared to other makeup gurus or makeup channels, but for me, it's a lot of makeup. And I do that only because I feel it translates a lot better on camera and it just looks like there's more contrast um, in video. So I put on makeup when I film specifically for filming. On an everyday basis, however, going to school, going to work, running the errands, I do not wear that much makeup. That's the makeup I wear for filming, for going to a beauty event, or for going out something special. On a regular basis, this is the type of makeup that I would wear. I'm wearing still quite a number of products, but in a very natural way. And I've kind of skipped eye makeup altogether because that usually takes me a lot longer to do, and I just don't have that time when I'm running out the door at you know 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and I need my makeup up to last the entire day till maybe six when I get home again so it's a long day I prefer to wear something easy but still have a little something on my face so I'm going to talk you through the products I've been using most frequently in the past month and I'll have little cutaway clips of me actually applying the makeup let me know as you're watching this video if this format works for you and if you'd be interested in seeing more of this series I thought it might be helpful for you so let's jump into some of the products the first things I put on after my moisturizer is this duo. I've been wearing it so frequently, even before this month, and they've been doing really well. So I've got here the Paul and Joe Moisturizing Primer. Now, this particular uh, version of the moisturizing primer is no longer available in stores. They've currently upgraded to a newer edition, but I'm still using the old, pa uh, the old uh, formula. I think this is a great primer. I've been eyeing Paul and Joe products in my Japanese magazines for years and they've always talked about this primer. I didn't really get it because it was really hard to get a hold of. Now the Paul and Joe is available in select shoppers drug mart locations across Canada. Um, it's much more accessible. This is about the same price as the Laura Mercier moisturizing primer and I like them both. They seem quite similar to me. This one I would say keeps my skin moisturized maybe just a little bit longer and um, it has a slightly smoother feel to it. However, it is not a heavy silicone based primer which is great for me because I tend to break out a lot with those. So I've got this on then I will put on the Laura Mercier um, Mineral Pressed Powder Foundation. Now this originally comes in a jar format like a loose mineral powder but they've also got this pressed version. However, I've recently been looking to find the lighter shade of this pressed version and I have not seen anything from the um, the pressed format in like three or four Sephora's I've been to locally around Vancouver. So I'm, I have a feeling this might be getting discontinued. However, it is so good. It's very natural on the skin. I have reviewed this and uh, together with the moisturizing primer, it just really extends the wear of the foundation. I am someone who doesn't like powders very much because I don't like to look powdery. Um, but this just really melts in with your skin, especially with the primer. And the primer for me is really about after the five hour mark, after I've got it on, my skin still looks pretty good. So if I am wearing the foundation for less than about 4-5 or five hours, I may not use a primer, but if I'm going out there for the entire day for school, I will use this one. And by the way, the color I have right now is Real Sand, which is one NC25. It's a bit dark for me right now, and I'm still hunting for the lighter color, which is uh, Real Porcelain. And that might be a little bit light, so I feel like I'm right in between, but currently there isn't a perfect shade for me. However, I love this product so, so much that I'm willing to work with it. I'm sure come summertime, it'll be a much better fit for my skin tone. Next then, let's just keep on going with the skin. I do have a lot of products for skin and uh, less in terms of color makeup. I have recently been using this gorgeous blush duo from Galan, and this is their spring collection. It's called Galan Rose um, Number 17 Smile. It's in this beautiful, bright, very festive actually packaging for spring 2016. And it comes like this, in a little blush duo. 
It also comes with a little applicator brush, which is fine. It's not perfect as most small applicators go. Um, I sometimes will use this when I'm in a rush and I can't reach for a brush. But I like that it has a very pretty um, combination of a blush and a blush highlight. This highlighter does still has um, have a tiny bit of color, but it's mostly for a slight bit of sheen and to uh, really pop the blush. It's quite a pigmented product, so you don't need a lot on your face. And I find this formula for the spring 2016 to be smoother and less drying than the fall 2015 formula that they had for uh, a similar blush product. So I think this limited edition, it should already be in stores in your local Guerlain counter or even at Sephora, so check that one out. Um, Really great one I think from the 2016 collection by the brand. Then I've got here the Too Faced Candlelight Glow. I have this in both colors. I know they release a a new shade almost like a like a peachy type of highlight for 2016 in spring um, but I've been using one or the other today on my face however I am wearing this one the original candlelight glow this is a highlight powder duo and it's got two shades in it essentially it's got one very light shade and one almost a blush colored shade so you can use them separate or together I am not super finicky because I find once applied on the skin um, just looking at someone in real life it's not very obvious uh, the difference between the two colors so I just kind of get my brush in there and go to town but this is actually quite a natural type of highlight it gives you enough but you won't look on fleek if that's what you're looking for um, this photographs very naturally as well um, and I find it's just an everyday highlight you know which is sometimes what you're looking for sometimes you don't want that super metallic highlight and this is great for that I do think that the colors can be a hit or a miss on some people because despite this not giving off a lot of color color the sheen of the highlight does have either a golden or a pinky tone and I'm not absolutely certain which of the two Too Faced highlights um, are the best shades for me but I'll figure that out later as I use more of it but I have been using this a lot in the past couple of weeks and I've been using actually with this brush from I want to say this is Eco Tools it is their Deluxe Fan Brush excellent for the price I have a much more expensive fan brush um, and this works just as well for a lot less money I love that it's a much denser brush. A lot of the more inexpensive fan brushes are very thin or they're the dual fiber and I don't love that as much. This really has enough just density to it and I love using it for the highlight because it's a flat shape and you can just go around the sides of your cheekbones, on the center of your nose as you'll see and it's a very easy to use and makes highlighting quick and snazzy. Now, eyebrows. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Let's talk about concealer first. I almost forgot about this as part of the base products. Um, periodically, I will use concealer. I don't use it every single day, but I'll sometimes do a little around the under eye area or any um, odd spots and blemishes I may have. This one is the Sephora Bright Future. Um, I guess this is a gel concealer is what they're marketing it as. So this is Sephora's answer to the Urban Decay concealer which is very popular um, this comes in a lot of shades which is great I have the shade in number 07 custard so as you can see it goes really really pale if you have very light skin um, I'm about an NC20 and I have to wear a 07 custard so there's a lot of options um, in the lighter spectrum there isn't quite as many options in the darker spectrum but you might still be able to find something that suits you this one has a very interesting doe foot applicator that's not slanted, it's just a little dot. So I'll use this and dot 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 wherever I need to and then just blend it out. It has pretty decent coverage, um, but I'm not certain if I love it yet. Um, I do prefer, I think, for under the eyes versus any blemishes. Now we're on to our eyebrows. Uh, this is the newer Maybelline Brow Drama Pro Palette. And this comes in quite a large packaging unfortunately. I don't like how bulky it is, but it's got three products in here. It's got your um, eyebrow powder shade. It's got a matte highlight with maybe like a satin sheen. And then it's got this tinted brow wax. It does have two applicators as part of uh, the palette. There's a brush and there's a spoolie, which you'll see me use in the cutaway um, clips. But 
Essentially, I really just used powder. This is the dark version. There is also a light version, so only two options available. But this dark version isn't too red, which is very important for, I think, people who have dark hair. You often find that dark powders go leaning towards a bit of a terracotta or just too red. It doesn't look natural when it's applied. So this is actually quite a neutral, slightly ashy type of uh, brow shape, which is great. The wax that we use sometimes, but I find waxes as a whole don't mesh too well with my lack of eyebrows. The highlight I did use today, and I do use it periodically, but it's a very subtle highlight, so you could take it or leave it. Alright, last thing I want to show you is my lipstick. I am currently wearing, and uh, for many days of this month, the Mineral Fusion Lip Sheer Lipstick in the color Exotic. This is very, very pretty. I can see this as a MAC lipstick or as Maybelline, like My Lips But Better shade. It has a tinge of coral to it, and it gives off, I would say, a medium color payoff very smooth. Now I will say this is very beeswax based, so it smells like beeswax, it feels like, like beeswax, which I'm not a fan of, but the color is very pretty and it lasts a good amount of time on my lips. So I've been testing this one out for a review, so I'm still going at it. Um, and you'll see a review for the Mineral Fusion lipstick coming soon over on my blog. So this wraps up my monthly face face of every day, shall I say. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and found this concept helpful. Should you have any questions and comments on any of these products, let me know by leaving a comment down below. And um, any new products that you've been using, let me know as well. Looking forward to the... What I what do I have planned? I have um, some Clarence products in my hands are new that I'm very excited to share with you in maybe like a makeup face or something like that. Um, I also have one very special project, a collaborative um, project I've been working on with an Asian beauty brand that will come up later on this month, at the end of the month. So I'm a little frazzled by that because I haven't quite gotten started, I'm missing some products, but that will be happening, so look forward to that collaborative project coming up soon. Until then, take wonderful care of yourselves. I will see you again next week in another video. Bye!